Hello, and welcome to the next session of Logicalis's sustainability webinar series, The Hidden Cost of Business Travel. I'm Charissa Jagana, Head of Responsible Business at Logicalis. With sustainability now firmly a boardroom issue, businesses are increasingly looking to reduce their carbon emissions. And in order to do so, they're required to understand and measure where they're sourced from in the first place. This is done by categorizing them as scope one, two, or three emissions. Essentially, scope one emissions are those direct emissions owned or controlled by the business, whereas scope two and three are indirect emissions that are a consequence of the activities of the company, but occur from sources that aren't owned or controlled by it. A popular example of a scope one would be burning fuel in a fleet of vehicles, and of scope two would be electricity a business purchases that it uses in its buildings. A significant source of scope three emissions, on the other hand, would be when the company buys, uses, and disposes of products from suppliers. Scope three emissions are notoriously difficult to tackle, but there are some categories of scope three emissions that organizations can measure and tackle. One of these is business travel. Today, we are speaking to Dan Brown, CEO and co-founder at Route Zero, an organization that is helping businesses to decarbonize corporate business travel. The focus of the session will be on how businesses can tackle the hidden scope three carbon emission costs associated with business travel. We'll unpack some considerations that businesses can make on this emission category, some methods of tackling the hidden emission costs, the emission and cost savings that can be made through adopting sustainable travel policies, and the options available to lower business travel carbon emissions. At the end of the session, we will have time for Q&A, so please feel free to Business travel is a large source of emissions for our customers. Travel and transport is also the largest source of emissions in the UK and Europe. But what's important about travel is it's directly within our control. And so that means we can take uh, impact over it very, very quickly. So whereas the IPCC needs us to reduce emissions by 50% this decade, we're able to help customers reduce the emissions associated with travel within just a few months. It, with any disruptive technology, we see a bell curve where the early adopters are at the front, the majority are in the middle, and the laggards are at the back. Right now, the majority are focused on calculating their emission footprints. The early adopters are setting challenging goals for net zero by 2025 and 2030. But the ones, the leaders, the visionaries, the slightly crazy ones are right at the front and they're taking a full court press to decarbonize every major source of emissions within their footprint. And we see Logicalis in this category. And they can do that by um, targeting a 55% reduction against travel and transport. And as it's one of the major sources of emissions, that means you can accelerate your um, goal of net zero between 2025 and 2030. Dan, would you like to introduce yourself to our audience and give us a little background to the work you do at Route Zero? Hello, Charissa, and hello to everybody online. It's a real pleasure to be here with you today. I know everyone always says that, don't they? But I really mean it because it's one of the early opportunities that we've had to share the decarbonisation effects that we've delivered. So thank you very much for inviting us. Root Zero is a decarbonisation company and it uses climate tech to build a business outcome for our customers. And that outcome is more travel, less emissions, significantly less. I studied cartography and geography and my first job was with Friends of the Earth in South America mapping rainforest. Uh, I then went on to work in the tech sector for nearly 20 years and I travel to serve my customers all over the world. But I became concerned because cost was always a key factor in those journeys. But at the time, carbon was never a factor. And I left to start Route Zero. I really enjoyed the last in the sustainability series webinars between yourself, Teresa, and Ohad Sacha, a sustainability director. And I learned more about SBTI, this standard for, for target setting. 
the process for validating targets, collecting data, and making these reductions meaningful. And the differences between carbon offsetting, reduction, and removals. So I really recommend the recording for any of those on the line who might be interested in those topics. Thanks, Dan. You're so right. If anyone would like to see our previous webinar, the recording is on the Logicalis website or available here on LinkedIn under events. But Dan, let's get into it. What got you interested in carbon reduction linked to travel? Well, I looked at my own emissions and I realized that um, travel was by far my largest source. There's a, a renowned climate scientist called Mike Berners-Lee, and he's the author of a book called There's No Planet B. And he calculates that for the vast majority of us, travel is our largest source of emissions. And I, I realise that it's also the largest source for the UK, for Europe, for USA, and many other countries. And then I started looking at the company emissions reporting. So these are baselines or forecasts. And I met with organisations in the financial sector who reported 70% of their emissions coming from travel. The consulting sector, some of them reported 79%. Accounting, 83%. And the events industry, 96%. So travel really is the elephant in the room when it comes to emissions. Absolutely. It really is a hidden cost of doing business for so many organizations when it comes to the related carbon emissions. I think people don't necessarily consider the impact of flying around the world for meetings, for example. Part of Logicalis' commitment to the Science-Based Targets Initiative um, has meant declaring what we plan to achieve. And so we had to think really carefully about what this meant in terms of the practical steps we need to take to meet our ambitious targets. And when it came to those scope three emissions, Logicalis's main sources are linked, like many organizations, to purchase goods and services, which aren't in our direct control. But we also recognize that we do have an influence on many other categories of scope three emissions. So we started to evaluate the options available to us to deliver the SBTI reduction goals, um, the cost implications thereof, and relative timeframes to achieve them. And we quickly recognized that a meaningfully, meaningful category that we could tackle is business travel. So while as an organization, we operate strong remote working policies and adopt a borderless workforce where possible, business travel is still a critical element of our operations, as you've alluded to, Dan, for many um, organizations in various sectors. And whether that be a quarterly team catch up to discuss strategy or client meetings or industry get togethers to share ideas, business travel is still an important element of our operations. And it was this combination of considerations that led us to look more deeply into how we could tackle some of our scope three emissions through business travel and why we were so intrigued by Route Zero. So Dan, could you tell us a bit more about Route Zero, please? Sure. Route Zero's vision is to make it as easy to find a sustainable journey as taking your car keys out of your pocket. Our mission is to avoid 50 million tons of emissions that would otherwise contribute towards catastrophic climate change. And we do that by empowering companies with the digital tools they need to align the way they travel with their sustainability ambition. And these tools are deployed to organizations like UK Central Government, who went through our emissions methodology with real rigor, and other large companies like Logicalis. And can you explain to our audience how the platform works? Well, employees want to work for sustainable companies and companies want their employees to help them to be sustainable. In fact, the latest data shows that 66% of millennials won't take a job for a company with poor sustainability performance. But when their companies ask employees to manage their travel emissions, they often get met with blank faces. How do we reduce our travel emissions? And without doing a lot of planning, it's, it's hard to travel more sustainably. So Route Zero brings all of the digital tools to empower an organization to give their employees what they need. 
46% of those employees have said they want to adapt how they travel to limit their climate impact. So we start with a journey planning tool. Wherever your work takes you, we help you work out all of the ways to get there. And we rank them by the duration of the journey, the cost, and crucially, the emissions. And over time, we add interventions. These are aligned with nudge theory of behavioral psychology to help increase the decarbonization effect over time. So these are things like employee statements showing where your emissions are generated from, gamification and competition to add this competitive element to our performance. And we use data to measure the decarbonization effect versus a baseline and help a customer map where they want to get to and what level of interventions we need to apply to get there over time. Thanks, Dan. You're absolutely right. Um, prior to Logic Hollis's involvement with Route Zero, we had been trying to cut business travel emissions ourselves. And we discovered, as you've alluded, alluded as many do, that there were not many consistent tools or methodologies available, and that reaching our goals required considerable behavior change on the part of our employees to be able to make a difference. When Route Zero demonstrated that the same journey that one of our executives had recently taken, comprising of a flight and a taxi ride, could be done simply and easily with 87% less carbon dioxide emissions using the Eurostar and train, we were really impressed. So we started using Route Zero through a pilot with our group team, and the intention is now to roll it out to EMEA and eventually to all of our operations across the world, in line with the sustainable travel policy that was recently adopted globally. Dan, I know you've been busy with some data verification on the difference that the team's use of Route Zero has made. Can you shed some light on this and whether this is typical of the results that you see amongst other customers? One of the opportunities that business travel provides all of us in sustainability is data. Data-driven insights lend credibility and authenticity to sustainable innovations, as well as highlighting tangible progress. And if we measure the impact of the interventions we make at Logicalis, we actually see it's led to more travel. So the number of journeys have increased by 23% over the baseline. Team members are traveling more kilometers to meet more customers and partners. But crucially, emissions are significantly down. Logicalis has reduced emissions from travel by 26% across the group. And thirdly, cost. We've got to make sure that we don't break the financial budget. And in fact, we've done the opposite. So costs are also significantly down versus the baseline. Now, while every sustainability journey starts with a first step, it's this aggregation of all of these carbon reductions that we're interested in driving across companies to deliver true impact. And since travel is so measurable, we can build tools to collect the data and evidence this decarbonization effect according to trusted methodologies like the DEFRA methodology. That's great, Dan. So just to reflect on that for a moment, since introducing our sustainable travel policy and the use of Route Zero at Logicalis, our group team has traveled more, but we've reduced emissions and saved costs, which is amazing. Um, so Dan, for our audience joining us today, can you share some ideas on what businesses can do to get started on their travel link to mission reduction journey? Sure. I was having a think about this ahead of the call. And I think if I put myself in the shoes of sustainability leaders who are looking to accelerate their emission reductions, I'd suggest three things. Number one, it's important that we pick our battles in sustainability using data and prioritization. So is travel a significant part of the footprint? Or perhaps do we need to win some quick wins against some challenged net zero performance? Second is this concept of air cover. Because there are so many competing priorities across a company, can you garner a sea level sponsorship, which is so pivotal to driving change? Leadership is this process of social influence for the benefit of the organization. 
So where does your social influence come from in your company? And can you recruit it to accelerate the results through an initiative like this? And third, organisations often want something really practical that they can get started with right away. So Route Zero has some free journey planning tools that you can take a look at. So you can analyse your common journeys and look at what your decarbonisation opportunity looks like for your company. And check out rootzero.com and you can make use of those tools. Thanks, Trissa. I think uh, the line just uh, went silent then for a second. But um, yeah, I think you were going to move on to some of the questions. And I can see some, a couple of questions coming through. Um, first here, thank you. Yeah, I'm happy to take this one. So the question here on the screen is, do you think business travel will continue to be a large source of scope three emissions despite this shift to remote working and the pandemic? Well, we're a data driven company. So what does the data show? It, it shows that last year we broke two records. Number one, the all time high for daily commercial flights. And number two, the warmest year on record across the globe. So business travel, including aviation emissions, aviation emissions particularly, have doubled since 2000. And despite this ability to meet online, most companies are seeing a post-COVID bounce in travel. And that's putting their sustainability goals under pressure. Plus, decoupling growth from emissions remains a challenge because companies are looking to break into new markets to fuel their growth. And therefore, they see travel as a rising percentage of their footprint. So yes, ab absolutely, business travel is a large and growing portion of Scope 3. And Accenture by, sorry, research by other um, organisations like Accenture shows that 93% of companies will fail to reach their net zero goals unless they double the pace of emission reduction by 2030. Um, so that all sounds really challenging, but our goal at Route Zero is to support customers to manage their emissions and deliver a 50% reduction this decade. It's well within our power and it's also in line with the climate science and the targets that are ascribed to us by, for example, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC. Thank you. That's great, Dan. Um, the next question is, how big a proportion on average does business travel make up of scope three emissions for an organization? Now, Dan, I imagine that differs quite dramatically depending on the kind of sector you're in. Yeah, the emissions, um, the proportion really varies considerably depending on the company you work for. I referenced a few examples at the head of this call of 70 to 90 percent. Um, what is consistent, though, is that travel is just about the largest, the, the most significant emission activity that you can undertake as a human being. And so there's things that all of us can do about it. And if you want to work out your emissions from travel, then you can plug in a bunch of journeys and see what your common destinations generate in terms of your emissions footprint. Fantastic. Thank you, Dan. The next question is, has adopting sustainable travel policies made a big difference to Logicalis? I'll take that one. Um, yes, so I'd say having a policy has served a few purposes, I think. The first is having a policy absolutely reinforces our commitment. It's a formalized policy that is adopted globally, and it really sends that message to all of our employees, to everyone within our ecosystem, that we are serious about what we're trying to achieve. And I think that is in itself a big step and a big um, step forward in kind of starting to make a difference. The second is that our policy provides some guidance for reducing emissions. So it's about um, giving employees the tools to take practical steps to reduce their emissions. 
And we've seen a notice, noticeable difference through the combination of the travel policy and the use of Route Zero. So Dan, as you've shared, we've had more travel with the number of journeys up 23%, um, but our emissions have reduced by 26% and our financial budgets are also with, in line to what we've planned. So I think a key aspect of um, successful policy implementation, and we will continue to work at improving and identifying opportunities to improve, is coupling the policy with a tool such as Route Zero to really bring that policy to life. And it's about having the kind of, here's what we want to achieve with, here's how we'll achieve it. So I think it's made an absolute difference. Next question is, are there other options available to reduce emissions via travel? What do you think, Dan? Yeah, I'm happy to take this one. You know, the, the options and the interventions are really endless. Um, there's a plethora. Companies can implement a sustainable travel hierarchy. So they'll support employees to consider virtual to in-person and the cost of the carbon associated with each journey. So they can then balance the value of the meeting with the carbon as another KPI to be managed over the year, just like a budget. Um, policy plays a big role. Social influence and peer insights are important. I mentioned carbon budgeting, trip mode switching, so moving from one mode of travel to another. Um, gamification and competition, measurement is really key. And the answer is usually a combination of all of these things to maximize the impact across the organization. That's brilliant. Thank you, Dan. I'm not sure if we have any other questions. Doesn't seem like it. So. Dan, I want to thank you again. I know my sound cut off earlier, so I want to reiterate my thank you so much for your insights today. Um, it's such a meaningful topic and hopefully what we've shared today can be of value to our audience and to the other organizations who are on their sustainability journey. Um, it's really been wonderful. Thank you for sharing your wisdom and your insights. And I'm sure we'll all be thinking twice when it comes to booking our next journey. So thank you, Dan. I look forward to seeing our audience at the next session in our sustainability webinar series. So thank you so much for joining us today.